First, we had a Mega Man style stage. Then the reskin of an unpublished game. But now, what else could we have? Ew! A full game! The best way to experience this game is without seeing the review. Well, the best would be having read the Fireman comics and then play without seeing the review. I read them all except the last one, the debut of Rescuer Girl, but it doesn't seem to be essential. And it's free, so go ahead! Well, for those who wanted to see more before playing, or have already played, previously, in Flames of Passion. I mean, Manimar, the friendly neighborhood firefighter. Yeah, that's about it. The Masked Firefighter is a superhero with enhanced strength thanks to a military project, recreated in the current era by the Green and Yellow Skull. You'll have to finish this project already, dammit! I wanna be the Red Skull, dammit! In his first game, in the Mega Man style, he fights against one of his arch nemesis, in a stage full of enemies that are, let's say, curious. <laughs> That game, in my opinion, deserved a 6 for what it was. Something free to have fun with in exchange for popularizing the hero. The second I didn't feel was as good. I was curious because I hadn't played Super Sun yet, but no. The third one is the one we'd really have something totally deserving of our attention. Here, instead of a stage, we have seven, each with our hero's adversaries. Would they be clean face fire encouragers? Masking fire friendlies? The playability improved. We have lives and energy, some of the enemies returning were re-leveled to become more interesting challenges. For instance, the giant start ninja doesn't shoot in free archers anymore, so now we have a way to calculate where to be and the game can present them amidst a whole scene with other adversaries without becoming too difficult. Real scenery looks quite interesting in this Mega Man style. Not everything makes sense, here and there a platform is made of something in an unusual position, which is almost always forgivable as poetic license, but I'm talking mostly about the platforms being made of different things for some reason. Buildings stand side by side, or the floor being almost completely taken by garbage. As bad as our communities get, rarely do I look and think, can I step there? I might sink, or get to the pool. <laughs> Or did the Bay Monster bring his cousin made of trash? And I haven't seen a pigeon explode since Mangu, but each stage has its ambience well defined and with familiar music. details might really be a problem, even if only a little. The energy has more than one bar, but it isn't difficult to miss the first becoming the second. Another issue is that the shields don't stop the shots anymore, they take the enemies out of the way. It's not something bad in itself, before the shots would ricochet and you couldn't keep shooting, and now others can be hit in the meanwhile, even behind them. So it's actually useful for the player, even if it might confuse for a bit. A very positive thing is that the game doesn't require create enemies, and the heights more difficult to hit can be better hit just changing places, which incentivizes the player to think strategically. Putting all of that together, when there doesn't seem to be a way to hit an enemy, it's usually just an issue of finding a better place to attack from. Before the game itself, we have a mini stage where we see the buildings of the companies involved. I thought when the game was won, they'd open up, but even after finishing the game with Rescuer Girl, they didn't. It's also the only place where you're not totally in 2D, being able to go up and down. And how glad am I there was no more of that. Here it's easy to miss an enemy from a distance, because you don't need to worry only about the height. You can choose between the Masked Firefighter or the new heroine, Rescuer Girl, and we'll be able to use other characters after finishing the game. This implicates the stages being in different orders and in a difference in difficulty, which we'll talk about later. But basically, I couldn't finish the game with the Masked Firefighter, only with Rescuer Girl. Among the enemies, it seems the arsonist is the worst. I, I never exactly found how to face him. It seems that if you stay at half distance next to the middle of the room, you can jump his attack and he'll go over you without hitting you. This after a first stage for the Firefighter, incend you. This would simply be fire 
that in English, but I guess the idea would be closer to Towering Inferno. And it looks like the first game redone. Almost as if that one had been a demonstration, even if not called a demo. You wouldn't know anything about that, would you? First web series episode that's two minutes long? Ah, tá, mas que legal. Maybe they were afraid people might dismiss it if it was called a demo? I don't know. Honestly, the first game can still be an interesting challenge for its difficulty, but this stage is a much more fun version. We have that explanatory big screen as you start, and your hero can go behind it, which isn't good. But outside of that, just the enemies falling with no warning seems bad, and that's only once or twice. It's a bird! It's a plane! Nah, it's a commercial. Aside from this, after a stage atop buildings, we have the attack of Mosquitron, Reed Airman with mutant mosquitoes, whose comic I want to review. It has an interesting story, but an ending that's quite problematic. After the bridge, yes, it's the Rio Niterói one, officially Presidente Koshi Silva Bridge. We have Dr. Frey, which we saw in the first comic, now with powerful shockwaves. After a stage in a favela, we have Serol, which is the Brazilian version of Manja or Hilo Corado, a preparation of cut glass using kite strings. He's from the same comic Rescue Girl is introduced in, with his powerful set all strings. On the fifth phase for the firefighter, we have to fly to Christ the Redeemer, and here is where the controls really need to be rethought. The flying mask firefighter is pretty loose. You might need to fly the whole screen to position yourself and be able to attack the flying enemies. His sprite is also pretty awkward too. It almost looks like he has no arms. So there's movement when he fires, sure, but it's almost like it's handy, cosplaying. That's because the rest of the body is stretched to show the position better. That makes me ask, what does the arsonist look like flying? Wow, how different. And him sliding. <laughs> It looks like he needs to keep his legs open the whole time. I must be careful with my petrified hips. Is he just hitting up with his knee? He seems to be a block that happened to spawn arms and legs out of the blue. But he's not made of wood. Nobody is. When we get to Christ the Redeemer, after that picture is taken in the first web series episode, we have to face Rescue Girl, which is being manipulated by Mala. And she's pretty difficult, even having a charge shot, which we don't have. In the following stage, we're going to somewhere in the middle of Chijuca National Park, where the bridges work in a weird way. Boo! And going through behind a waterfall, we face the anarchist, Reed Sparkman. After a sewer stage, we battle again with Muscatron, go through the enemy's secret base, where we battle again with the arsonist and set all. And the arsonist was even more difficult to face, but fortunately had had less energy, to then face against the monster of the bay, which is rock monster, but a lot more fun because he just splits in two. And finally, we go on to another flying stage, and this is the worst moment of the whole game. Here, more than in the first flight stage, you don't have time or space not to be hit by the various enemies flying. The only strategy that seems to work somewhat is shooting once or twice on them and watch if they stop following you around and then avoid them. But this is rarely viable when we have so many adversaries coming at once and it doesn't always work. Besides, the enemies occasionally cause much more damage for some reason, so you can lose a life without deserving it. Yes, all of them, even the pigeons. Then again, they are explosives, right? Likewise, our final enemy is Moloch, which actually isn't a mask for a fighter villain, but for a final match, a reincarnated demon who controls fire is a good call, and I have no idea what to do against him. He seems to stay still and shooting if you hit him, so I tried shooting and getting out of the way, but this doesn't seem to work for long. Oh, so get away and keep going, right? Only he doesn't let you. After the beginning, when you have space, he simply doesn't let you get any more space. At least that was what I was thinking before playing with Rescue Girl. Oh. Playing with her, we start in Fuba Hill, going to the Atlantic Forest, and then we go straight to the hideout, still facing Mosquitron and the Arsonist before the Bay Monster. Bridge, then Bay, where the Bay Monster isn't. Huh, maybe Moloch made the water boil? So going through the buildings and facing Mosquitron, and then to the fire, followed by Christ the Redeemer. And Moloch is 
absolutely defeatable with Rescue Girl. If with the Masked Firefighter it seems difficult to shoot and avoid, with her it seems like he almost can't hit you at all. Keeping the same position, hitting and avoiding seems a lot easier. I must point out, after we face the first part of the sewers, Our friend Tyson says Moloch was drawing the enemy's energy to come back to life, which I have to imagine would be a mistake in the script. Moloch, as I said, is a demon that uses fire, but he isn't shown as someone that drains energy or something like that, but a god of fire worshipped by an ancient people from the Bible, the Ammonites, which in his introduction chose a body and came back to life without difficulty. Maybe the cult needs the energy to bring him to life and such, and they are using machines for that but this isn't explained and goes against the idea of the comic. Whether this is an alternative reality or they ended up not showing a lot, since that's the justification for the enemies being here as sub-bosses, how the Bay monster would be here, I really don't know. At most, it'd be a coincidence. When you play as Rescuer Girl, it makes even less sense, this being directly before Moloch. Then again, we have the bridge before him, but the Bay monster is still before the ba oh whatever. I had plenty of fun and and I recommend the game for anyone who likes Mega Man. It's already hard not recommending a game that's free, and we can still play as two different characters from the start, or two players together, which I really don't recommend. Even with the recalibrated enemies, it's simply too difficult. Seeing the characters you get to use, however, the problem might become clear. Playing with Tyson, we have much less energy, but we can use a charged shot that not even our heroes have. So being, it's clear why we would not be just the enemies as before, so it's not boring. And with the arsonist, having rapid fire that's this big, it's absolutely ridiculous thinking of having less enemies. Even the fire is giving him life. So, it seems the problem was thinking that Chu would be the same as an overpowered character. The rest was very interesting, making use of what they have, something between a fan game and an homage. I'd love to see a new version with Moloch recalibrated for the Masked Firefighter and the two-player mode made better.